What is going on, everybody? Sports Expert here, and we are here with some NFL draft content. We're going to be doing a ton of post-NFL draft content today in the next few days here. So before we start the video, please hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Turn on the post notification bell to get all NFL videos. If you're an NFL fan, we're going to be doing a lot of content here. Like the video, comment what you think. I would really appreciate that, guys. So let's get started with the best value picks of the 2023 NFL Draft. With round one, we're starting off with the Philadelphia Eagles at number nine, taking Jalen Carter, the defensive tackle from Georgia. Jalen Carter was my number one player in the whole entire class. He obviously fell due to some off-the-field concerns, but the Eagles are getting a great player here, a player with high motor, very solid athleticism, you know, he takes multiple guys to even bring down you know looking at the production you're like uh jalen carter i don't know if he's worth a top pick but if you watch the product on the field you know he disrupts the backfield like never before uh and he he's a generational talent like you see a trayvon walker and a jordan davis those guys were great but you could argue jalen carter built the foundation of that defensive line from georgia in 2021 at 17, we have the Patriots with Christian Gonzalez, a cornerback from Oregon. One of the most complete corners in the class. Not really sure how he fell this low, but the Patriots get a massive steal here. They traded down three spots to get him too. So definitely a chess move here by Bill Belichick. I had Devin Witherspoon on my board over Gonzalez, but enough being said, Gonzalez is a steal for the Patriots. He's going to succeed with Bill Belichick the way he develops corners. It's a great pick. At 25, I have the Bills selecting Dalton Kincaid, tight end out of Utah. He was my number 15 overall player. Great pass catcher. They'll pro they might use him in a slot quite a bit, even though he is a tight end. But the Bills have been looking for a complete slot guy for a couple years now. And a guy like Dalton Kincaid absolutely works. And he can definitely provide some value with some blocking. Not the best blocker, but definitely value there, especially in the slot. A guy that can block as well. I, ri I really like that for Buffalo. The talent is there. At 28, I have the Bengals selecting Miles Murphy, defensive end out of Clemson. He was my number seven overall player in the draft. The Bengals get ridiculous value here. Miles Murphy, I think he has so much potential to be one of the best pass rushers in the game in the future. You pair him up with Trey Hendrickson. I mean, that could be deadly. And you have Sam Hubbard there as well on the edge. You got some like legitimate pieces for the Bengals here. You know, Miles Murphy, all he does is just his get-off is absolutely sensational. Another thing I loved about his tape. So, the Bengals just keep getting better. At 29, I have the Saints selecting Brian Brzee, the defensive tackle out of Clemson. A lot of people might disagree with this one, but he was my 17th player in the class. I The talent is there. I feel like he was undervalued due to the games he missed, but he's a much better player than his stock portrayed him to be. You know, he... He really, he might be the best defensive interior defensive lineman in this whole draft. He he really might be. Um, you know you have Jalen Carter, but when it's all said and done, there's a chance Brian Brzee could end up being the best. Because we didn't get to see the full Brian Brzee in his college career due to the injuries, due to the off-the-field problems. You know, so what if we see all of that? There's definitely a lot here for, like, for the Saints. And at 30, the in the first round, to conclude, we have Nolan Smith, defensive end from Georgia. He was my number 18 overall player. Size concerns are the number one reason why he fell in the draft, but the Eagles take advantage here, take another Georgia defender. Howie Roseman is always going to take advantage no matter what, and it makes sense here. Nolan Smith, the pectoral injury definitely had something to do with it, but great pick overall. In round two, Steelers taking Joey Porter Jr., cornerback from Penn State. Not really sure how he fell to the second round. I know there were some problems with his... Um, potential with potential penalties and such and in some maybe some limited issues in man but joey porter jr the steelers are getting an absolute steal right here he's the son of a uh, former steelers linebacker joey porter it makes sense it's just a great pick at 33 we have the titans taking will levis quarterback out of kentucky a consensus top 10 pick he actually had the best odds to go number two overall at one point last week so the titans get it a, they traded up from 41 to 33 to select Levis. Makes a lot of sense here. I mean, with Malik Willis just not playing well, I guess a guy like Will Levis is definitely interesting. At 35, I have the Raiders selecting Michael Mayer, tight end out of Notre Dame. I think this is my steal of the draft, honestly. He was my number 11 overall player. Mayer, the dude can... 
he he didn't test very well, but he plays faster than the stats show. He's a legitimate blocker, something Dalton Kincaid really isn't. So Mayer, the Raiders, they lost Darren Waller, but they are getting a sensational replacement here. Absolute phenomenal pick. Going to fit well with that Josh McDaniels offense. I have the Saints taking Isaiah Foskey, defensive end out of Notre Dame. The Saints here, they um, lost Marcus Davenport, so they needed someone to fill out. And Isaiah Foskey, another player I had a first-round grade on, falls to 40. The Saints get legitimate value here. Very disruptive pass rusher. A absolutely do- incredible at getting it to quarterback. He's a guy that's going to get to the quarterback. Whether he completes a sack or not, he's going to get those hurries. He's going to get to the quarterback. He's going to take him down most of the time. This is a guy that has potential to be a 10-sack-a-year season guy. That's how talented this dude is. Great pick by the Saints. At 45, we have the Lions taking Brian Branch, the safety from Alabama. Another guy I was stunned to see fall in the first round. So versatile. He can play corner he can play in the safety mainly slot corner but so much versatility with this guy didn't test very well in the tape in the first half of the 2022 season was up and down but you saw the flashes of him on tape especially in the second half of the season Alabama um you know the secondary was an absolutely phenomenal you had guys like Eli Ricks DeMarco Helms in there as well but nobody absolutely dominant Ryan Branch was that guy and the Lions are getting great value here he's similar to CJ Gardner Johnson but CJ Gardner Johnson is only on a one-year deal so this makes a lot of sense for the Lions here they traded up as well to get him at 57 I have the Giants selecting John Michael Schmitz center out of Minnesota the Giants needed a big a big boy they needed a big boy inside the Giants go out and get that here with Schmitz didn't test very well either, but he's a guy that has a lot of upside. You can't deny this one at all. The Giants made a perfect pick here. Pick here. At 59, I have the Bills selecting who I also had a first round grade on. Osiris Torrance and guard out of Florida. Why did Torrance fall to 59? Good idea. Good uh good question. I mean, why did he fall? Because I didn't see anything wrong on the scouting report. I thought. Maybe he was overhyped a bit. Maybe there was some bad advice. I don't know. But I had a first-round grade on Torrance from my evaluation. He's a plug-and-play starter. He's great against the run. Solid against the pass. I do think the he can be a plug-and-play guy for the Bills immediately. Love this pick. And round three, the Eagles selecting Sidney Brown, safety out of Illinois. Very good pick here as well. And Drew Sanders, linebacker from Arkansas uh, by the Broncos, another great pick. I had a first-round grade on Sanders. You know, he switched the linebacker. He also got to the the quarterback. Sidney Brown, a guy that can play all over the field, especially in the backfield. Uh, He can attack the backfield. He's, you know, he's a great ball hog. He's a guy that the Eagles are going to love. There's some other guys. We got Hendon Hooker, quarterback out of Tennessee. Lions, he's going to sit behind Jared Goff for a bit, but great value. Had him at 40 all overall in my rankings. Tucker Craft, another guy at 43. He gets taken by the Packers at 78. I love how the Packers finally address their needs with weapons. They took two tight ends. I definitely – I understand why there's questions about that, but I do really like it. Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft, really nice work by the front office, although I have given a lot of crap to Brian Gutenkus in the past. Some other guys, we have Josh Downs for the Colts. A guy I, I could have seen going late first in the second, and I thought would go for sure in the second. But the Colts get great value here at 79, and I mean great value. Colts had a great draft overall. Another guy I considered putting in here is Julius Brents. I had him at 32 in the player rankings. He went 44. But I feel like I don't want to put too many players in, but really like him. But Downs, he might be limited to slot. Maybe that's the number one reason why the Colts are kind of the teams are kind of down him, but the Colts said, let's give him a shot. It makes sense. Trenton Simpson, he was my number 13 overall player. I was his biggest fan. Linebacker to Clemson, he's versatile. He can do a lot. The Ravens get a great player here. And, I mean, the Ravens get a steal. They take advantage. I think they traded up here, if I'm correct, which makes sense. Get a great player to Simpson. And then the Cowboys take my 54th overall player, another linebacker I really liked, and DeMarvian Overshone. So he was my linebacker for... A guy that really improved this past year. Very fast. He's 
great against the run. He's his IQ is he's some of the best IQ in this whole draft. I really like that uh, from the guy from Texas. So yeah, and the Steelers Darnell Washington. I understand why he fell medical concerns. He was a bit stiff at times, but the Steelers get a great player here in Darnell Wright. Definitely gonna um help the offense. Him and Pat Fryermuth is a nice tight end duo. And in round four, the Eagles get Kiwi Ringo. The footwork and the lack of consistency against top receivers was the reason why he fell. But the Eagles take another Georgia back. Uh, Tommy Adebor from Northwestern, the defensive tackle. He fell to the fourth round. Have no idea why. Had a great pre-draft process. He was. I had a second round grade on him. The tape was phenomenal. Not really sure why he fell. Maybe because he was a tweener prospect. Don't know if you should... He's He may not fit defensive end. You're not sure if he's going to fully fit defensive tackle, but he is a guy that can play anywhere in the, that defensive line. The Browns get DeWan Jones, the offensive tackle from Ohio State. The reason why he felt, I had him as 33 on my board, but I heard a lot of issues about his work ethic. If he was willing to be able to do enough work to be successful in the NFL because the weight wasn't in an ideal spot. He was running late at times to meetings. So, But the Browns get great value here in DeWan Jones, and working with Bill Callahan should help. The Falcons get Clark Phillips from Utah. He'll probably be limited to slot, but the Falcons get great value here. City So, he was my 82nd player. I really like what the Patriots did here. They stacked up on guards, and I think So might be my favorite player here. Carter Warren for the Jets loved the tape. I think um, I had a fourth-round grade on him originally, but I really lean towards having a second-round grade on him. He's just phenomenal on tape. I think the four games he played was the reason why I had him a bit lower, but if he plays the whole season, he's an easy top 40 player, top 50 to 40 player in my board. At 122, I have John Gaines, the guard out of UCLA for the Cardinals. Very athletic. Definitely a guy the Cardinals are going to like. Round five, the Jaguars didn't have a great draft, but they get Yazir Abdullah from Louisville, a guy that can rush the passer. He can drop back in the coverage. Great pick. Is he a band of Canada? One of my favorite running backs in this draft. The Jets get him at 143. Great value overall. Jamie Robinson to the Panthers. Had him as my 70th overall player. Shocked he didn't go in the third round, but the Panthers get great value here at 145. Noah Sewell, who I had as my 66th player, falls to 148. I understand the concerns. The tape wasn't great this past year, but the upside is really there. Former five-star recruit as well. Love the pick. Q. Boo Kelly had him in the top 100 of my prospects. Ravens get a nice cover corner here. Antonio Johnson, safety from Texas A&M. He was considered a first-round prospect at one time, but the Jaguars take the gamble and get a nice player here. The Bengals get Chase Brown out of Illinois, the running back. Really nice runner. Definitely not a great blocker, which may have limited his, uh, his upside a bit, but team surely, a team like the Bengals gets a nice pick here. Henry Toa Toa with the Texans. There was some... Uh, limitations with him when it came to shedding blocks, but the Texans traded up seven spots to get him here. Owen Popo, another linebacker I really like, tested really well in the pre-draft process. The Cardinals get nice value here. Has really nice line-to-line speed. So, yeah. Eric Gray, some of the what, maybe the most shifty running back in the class. The Giants get a nice value pick here. Him and Saquon Barkley should work very well. So, yeah. And Evan Hole, one of my favorite players in this whole draft. I have at 99 in my players. Very powerful, very speedy. If you can be powerful and speedy, that's definitely a plus, and the Colts get great value here, too, with him and Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. I really like what I'm seeing there. At round six, Carl Brooks. He's another tweener prospect, maybe a reason why he fell, but the Packers doing their job here. J.L. Skinner fell to it due to an injury, but the Broncos know what they're getting here. He's a guy that would have went third round if not for the injury. Parker Washington, who had a second-round grade on, he falls to 185. The tape was definitely... Um, not amazing this past year, but he's great after the catch. He's quick. His footwork is on point. I really like what we got here for the Jaguars. He's very versatile, too, on the field. So, yeah. Jalen Duncan, he was a projected first-round pick at this point last year, like the way too early mocks. He fell a bit to the sixth round. There's definitely questions where whether he will play tackle or guard in the NFL, but I think the Titans get great value here. Kayshawn Butte, I think this is great value, although I think I had a six-round grade on him as well, but he's a former five-star prospect. There's a lot to like about him. I wasn't never been the biggest fan of Butte, but I know there's the potential is really there. The Browns get Luke Whipple, center of Ohio State. Short arms, but very athletic, very solid inside. A.T. Perry, wide receiver of the Wake Forest, can jump up and get the ball. Very good um, receiver. Uh, he could play on the outside uh, consistently. Jose Ramirez from Eastern Michigan. I'm surprised he fell this far. 
I will be honest. I didn't think he'd fall this far, but he's a guy. He's another guy that could be a tweener. But I lean towards him to play towards him playing the edge. Dude's fun. The five foot five Darren Sproles comparison falls to two twelve. Great value for the Cowboys here. Very quick. Very, you know, he's very tough to take down too for his size. Very impressive. Zach Evans, who might be one of my fa my top five favorite picks in this draft. The Rams get him at two fifteen. He has the potential to be a great back in this league. You get him at two fifteen. The Rams know what they're doing here. 216 D winners from TCU. A guy I had a, a early fifth round grade on. The guy does it all. His tape is great. He his, another guy with a great IQ on the field for linebacker. Definitely a guy the 49ers should be taking a shot on. And the Zach Jets get Zach Koontz, a guy that was up and down on tape, but the athleticism was there. And you get a tight end that athletic, you have to take him. Had a third round grade on him. Dwayne McBride, he fell due to medical history, but the Vikings are getting a great value pick here. Andrew Voorhees, same with him. Had the torn ACL. The Ravens traded up with the Browns to get him. Has a chance to be a long term starter. Nesta Jade Silvera, another guy that fell maybe due to his limitations in the passing game. Great run stopper. Maybe he can develop that pass a rush a bit. Jake Witt for the Colts. I had him at 128 on my board. Very good small school offensive tackle. His footwork is phenomenal. He, he knows how to win with his hands. Love that. Corey Trice, who I thought would be a fourth round pick. He fell to 241 due to injury history. The Steelers get great value here. Omar Khan killed the draft. Moro Ijomu, I am shocked he fell this far. Had him as my 84th player. D tackle seven. He's a guy that can be very quick inside. Don't know how he fell. Maybe he's another tweener prospect with less upside to some teams. But yeah, Alex Austin, him and Rayshon Wright both fell far. And Wright didn't even get picked. I am surprised by that. At fourth round grades on both. Aust Alex Austin, I, he, he's also versatile. Can play corner safety. Love this for the Bills. Ronnie Bell, receiver from Michigan. I think the past injuries are the reason why he fell this far. But very good route runner as well the 49ers are going to love him Gervarius Owens a guy Houston didn't have a great defense maybe there's that's a top reason why he fell I had a fifth round early fifth on him but you cannot die, deny the talent from Owens at all he sees the field very well and he's a guy that can easily be a uh, plug and play safety at some point in his career and my last great value pick was Panthers Grant DeBose the wide receiver out of Charlotte my concern with DeBose had a six round grade on him but there are concerns about him being able to create separation at the next level not the fastest guy in the world but he's shifty he has upside as a route runner and he's has a lot of upside as contested catch pass catcher Definitely something I like for the Packers there. They took a lot of weapons in this draft. And they took Tor from Nebraska last year at this point. So they got a lot of guys to choose from. So Brian Kunk is doing this job. So I appreciate everyone being here. Sports expert here. Please hit the subscribe button if you're new. Turn on the post notification bell. Hit the like. Comment what you think. I'm out, guys. Sports expert here. Peace.